Hey tribe, welcome to the HD Designs Crochet channel, HDDC. I'm Heather and this is my little vlog podcast all about crochet, knitting and a general yarny life. So, guess what has happened? I am at 100 subscribers, so for all of you that are new, Thank you so much for pushing me up there and for all of you that have been here from day one. Thank you so much for coming back time and time again. Um, as it's 100 subscribers, I'm going to be doing a giveaway, which I will show you at the end of this little recording, my little vlog. And there's going to be a 100 subscriber question and answer Q&A. So let's get started. But seriously... Thank you so much. It was great to wake up to the notification um, from YouTube, like a little badge celebration. 100 subscribers. And it's really nice to know that I'm not just here talking to myself. You're actually joining me. Um, and that's really, really nice. So thank you for sharing this time with me. So today I've got lots of good stuff to show you. Um, in my last vlog, I wasn't feeling very well and it was the start of the Easter holiday, Good Friday and I set out my plans. So as a little recap, my plans were to finish the jumper, the brown bamboo jumper, or at least get the sleeves finished. The other plan was to do something with some of the granny squares, you know how I've got about 400 of them, do something with them, like so in the end start joining them and to crack on with my sock pattern. So I did one out of three and completed a brand new project. So where shall we start? I guess to follow on from the last vlog, I did say that I was going to work on my socks that I started. Um, but they don't have a name, so once you see the pattern, if you've got any name suggestions, let me know below. Um, so first of all the yarn I'm using is this Homespun Wonders um, in Holly Fern. It's really nice deep green. It was part of my December sock box. Um, I'm using my two, two point something, two and a half mil um, Knit Pro Zings. Um, and they are two at a time magic loop. My yarn's got crazy tangled. Okay, and the pattern I've made up myself. So let me show you the pattern. Oh, I'm so proud of myself. So I've got this cable either side and I've got this eyelet design running up the center of the sock. And that is gonna continue all the way up to just below the ribbing. Um, and there's gonna be quite a deep ribbing because I like my ribbing as long as my toe. And this has got a hella big toe. So I made this pattern up myself. Um, I used a free cable pattern that I found online and the eyelet was a free swatch again that I found online. And I have um, worked out all of the maths myself. Yay, go me. And worked out how many stitches I'm going to need on my front. So on my, is this the instep needle? And how many I need on my heel needle. Um, because it's lacy, so I usually have about, I think I usually do 28 stitches on the front and then I've got 28 on the back. I've left 28 on the back, but because this is, the cable and the eyelets and the, because of the gather in them, you need it slightly wider. And with the maths involved, I increased it enough so that I could get the repeat in. Um, I'm really quite pleased with this. The only thing I'm not so keen on is that when I go from knit to purl, it gathers. Can you see? And same on that one, but not when I go purl to knit. But as you can see, when it's stretched out, it's when it's got my hand in, when it's got my foot in, you can't actually see it. It's going to block out fine. But I am really pleased with those. Um, 
took a few false starts and if any of you follow on my Twitter, HG Design to Crow, C R O, I have been massively moaning about how many times I've had to frog and wanting to give up. But some of my lovely, lovely followers have said to me, if you give up, we'll never get to see the pattern, think of all the work you've put in. Um, and one of the sort of bits of advice that really stuck with me was fail fast. So fail faster and um, just get on with it. If you make a mistake, then you've made it and then you can recover from it and get on with it quicker. So that's what I've been doing. Just trying to untangle... This has got a bit tangled in my um, project bag. There we go. And the stitch marker that I'm using is this mermaid design. Can you see it? It's got mermaid scales on it. And that was from my um, launch box of the sock box, HG Designed to Crochet HGDC. It's determined to hit the light funny, isn't it? There we go, it has scales, it looks like a mermaid. So that's my socks. They are on pause at the moment until I find a heel pattern that I'm happy to use. I don't want to interrupt this, so I don't want something that has gusset increases. Although would it interrupt the pattern because the gusset increases would be on the back. I need to sit and work out the best type of heel pattern um, for this and then once I do the heels are going in I'm going to carry on and then I'm probably going to release this pattern so if anybody wants to be a test knitter if they can let me know and if there's any tech editors out there let me know and again if anybody's amazing at taking photographs once they've knitted them I would reimburse you with some sort of goodies so that is my socks oh and a name, I need a name for them. Um, I was thinking maybe Isla because it's got eyelets, but I wanted, I don't know. I'm just so proud. So that's my socks, um, which I did say in my last vlog I wanted to crack on with. And in my head I wanted to get up to the heel and I've done that. As for the other projects, I didn't touch the jumper it's still on a shelf it's mocking me it's looking at me I need to do it I'm going to maybe I shouldn't say that I would like to get that finished soon I'm going to bring it to the front of my list but I don't know if I'm going to work on it soon um, and the other thing was the granny squares so I was going to sew a load in and start joining them together but I've held off really sorry if you can hear that banging it's not the greatest, is it? Really sorry about the banging. The neighbours are obviously enjoying their garden and the fact that it's not raining. So, let me close the window and we'll see if that helps. I've closed the window. I don't think you can hear him banging anymore. We might have just stopped banging, but anyway, apologies. So, the window's closed, where was I? Um, I need to finish the jumper, I haven't done it, and that was it. The squares, I don't know what to join them in. I want to join them in a bright pink, I don't have a lot of bright pink, and I am on a self-imposed yarn ban, as I have all the yarn, all the yarn, all the DK yarn. I've got lots of random one, one singular balls, not one balls, singular skeins of yarn and I've got plans in mind for them to use them up but until that stash decreases I don't really want to add to it because I'm doing this whole more minimalism, um, less is more. I've just been today and got rid of a ton of clothes um, with the cash for clothes so yeah working on that. So I don't really want to buy anymore and I'm saving the money for when I go to the next yarn festival and I'm going to take you with me and I can have a bit of a splurge. So, I'm not sure what to join them in and because I didn't really want to join them, I didn't really see the point in working on it. So, I started a new project because that's logical, right? So this is my finished object. 
and I am so proud of this. Okay, are you ready? Let me show you. This is my new project bag. So it's double sided. It has a zip in it, which I have sewn in and it's lined. So oh, I'm just so proud that this is what I've worked on all Easter weekend. I had family around, I cooked dinner for them and I was working on this the entire time. Um, so where should we start? Let's start with, this is, I'm not sure how long it is and I don't have a measuring tape with me, but it's one, two, three, four, five squares across and four squares down. And there's two sides, so. Wow, cranked out the squares. Yeah, 40 squares, three round granny squares. I used a 2.5 mil hook just because I wanted the tighter gauge. I didn't want you to see too much of the fabric behind. Now what I've done is um, it's actually lined in this cow fabric. My mother brought me this a while ago and I wanted to make a project bag, but I wanted, I didn't want that to be the outside. I know I wanted it to be the lining and I didn't have anything to put outside of it, which I thought, well, I could go buy something. And then I was like, no, no more stash enhancements. So I've made this sleeve in effect, granny sleeve. Um, I have made the pattern up myself and used the smaller hook so that you wouldn't see the fabric. What I've done, if I explain the construction, that might make sense. So I did the two panel, the two outer, outer edges, outer edges, outer pieces. I sewed in all the ends. I'm just gonna show you. I kept the ends in this tub. This is the ends. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I sewed in all the ends and I did join as you go method as well. So what I do is I started with, and I know I started up here on the mall, um, and I'd put a stitch marker on that one and I'd work my way down and then across and down. And that's because I wanted the joins to flow all in the same direction because that's important to me. On this side, I've got a pure pink square as well. Um, then I sewed all of the edges in. Then what I did was I, I had the zip already, so I, I knew that when I was making it, I wanted the edges of the bag to cover the ends of the zip. So there's the edge of the zip. Um, I then used the green to stitch and I started up here and I just did a single crochet the whole way around, join it all together, stopping there. Um, then I made the pouch to go in there. So to make the pouch, I did the lining. Um, that's got interfacing on the other side, which is, that means it's then white, more white through there and it doesn't show through. You don't, you don't have the print showing through, which I like. Um, then I did the usual way that you would line a pouch without the outer pieces being sewn on. And then I used some of the green yarn to sew the zip in. Now it's not the neatest because I did my stitching on the zip in black, not green. But I didn't have any green. So um, to make it neater, I would have done it in the khaki, then you wouldn't have seen. But otherwise than that, I'm very pleased. I then did this stitching along here and as I, so I started, as I got my, worked on my way around, sorry, I then picked up these stitches with this and so I single crocheted the whole way along there and um, then I fastened off, worked my way back and it means that when it's zipped up, it's got this nice edging to it. 
and it just looks really really good I'm really pleased with it looks really cute um the colors aren't my usual color palette i don't normally work with green even though obviously i have lots of green in my stash um but it's because i wanted it to coordinate with the fabric so yes i've made my own pad and it's got my pins and bat enamel badges um it's from edinburgh yarn festival 2018 that was from the harry potter shop in edinburgh and that was from the yak stand at Edinburgh Yarn Festival. I've got more to add on from my sock boxes as well so they will be adding to this. Um, that is why I wanted to put the interfacing on it so that my pins have got something to really hold on to because I don't want my pins becoming loose and me losing them. So that's my pouch. What do you think? And would you like the pattern? Um, because I am going to be working on a couple more of these so it's something I can put on my blog if anyone's interested. I can also do all the measurements and show you or tell you how to make it smaller and if you want I don't mind um, making a vlog tutorial of how to make it as well. So a little sew with me, make with me, that's really cute, I think we should do that. Anyone else want to do that? So that's now my project bag that my socks are living in. I'm going very green at the moment. Maybe it's because I want it to be summer, springtime. The yarns that I used are these colours here, which I've kept out to show you. Um, I will need to weigh the outer pieces so that I know how much I've used, because I don't actually know. I meant to weigh it, and then I just wanted to join it and get it finished. So this is just some dark green acrylic that I got for, I think it was like a pound or 50p from a market store. I know this is Stylecraft DK in something green. I've used it in numerous projects. It's leftover. Um, it's a very nice mint. I've also, well, spring green. Then I've got this. This is actual mint. Um, sort of a, a light a light Tiffany colour, you know that colour? I think you call it duck egg blue, but it is definitely not blue. Then I've got this slightly darker green, uh, lighter green, which that was only a 50 gram ball and there wasn't much anyway. This is Stylecraft DK in porridge or oatmeal, something like that. And... Then this is just some, again, random pink from the market. And I put those together. It took me... It took me about... I'd say an evening, so two to three hours to do the two sides. And some of that was in faffing with colours and I was speaking to people, I wasn't going all out. Then I'd say it took me another hour or so to sew the ends in. And yes, I could have done them as I've gone along, I know. Then it took me a good two or three hours to get my head around how I was going to... So before... Before I made the design, I had a design in my head that was slightly different and then I realised I didn't have enough yarn to make the slightly larger flat bottom bag that I envisaged that I will be making at another time. Um, but I had sort of jotted down step by steps of how I thought I was going to create this. Um, but where I'd put in my notes, add zip, I hadn't worked out how I was going to attach the outer piece to the inner piece. Um, I watched a few YouTube tutorials and people just sew straight through with their sewing machine but I didn't want to do that, especially as I didn't have the green or the pink It would, and I would have had to do it in black and it would have looked rubbish. So it took me a few hours of messing about and undoing seams and getting the tension right on my sewing machine um, but I think to make another one, another inner pouch would probably take me about 20 to 30 minutes so cutting it out and sewing it together is really simple take you longer to set up your ironing board and get your rotary cutter out and anyway um 
I'd say a weekend project definitely. I started it Saturday night and it was finished by Monday evening and uh, it wasn't the only thing I was working on because I worked on my socks and I started another project. So let me show you the next project I started. Um, but just before I do, it is really roomy so I can fit my socks in there. What's that rolling around? A needle. My socks, my little um, sewing book that I've made for myself go in there. A pair of little scissors. I've got a spare crochet hook for if I drop a stitch on my socks. The socks with their two bits of yarn. So yeah, it's quite roomy. Um, the only thing is I don't know how fluffy it's going to get from use. But I will let you know. So that's my pouch. Again, I haven't named that either. But then I had another idea in mind of how I could evolve this design. So let me show you my new whip. It's using this burgundy that you've seen before in my um, bargain yarn haul vlog and I think I showed it in my crochet one um, not long after. I was going to start a jumper dress and I did swatch for it but then as soon as I was working on this I just knew that I needed to use some of the yarn. So the swatch is gone. And I have started making, I'm just picking off all the Darcy hair, another one. So this is Aran weight, so it's slightly bigger, and you can see chunkier, works up slightly larger than the DK. Use the same size hook because going any smaller was gonna just hurt my hands, it's quite stiff. Um so I have got the first three rows almost done. Um, sorry, first four rows almost done because I go like this. So I did start sewing them in as I went along and I will stop at the end of this row and sew all the ends in. The stitch marker on this one is Christmassy, I know, but it's the holly wreath um, that I put in with, that went into the December box and it was to hand and it shows up. So it's on there. That's how I know where I started. Um, and it's quite a dark colour so you can't really see much detail. But this is going to be a clutch bag version of my pouch. So it's going to be, it's going to have the last row. And again, it will be like that on the back, pure burgundy. Um, it's going to have either a black or a neutral, this colour, zip. Um, I say that I have a black one. If I want this colour, I'm going to have to buy it. Um, but I really want to align it in a sort of plaid, plaid plaid, tartan, with burgundy and this kind of stripe through it, which I've seen so yeah i need to find a way maybe if i i need to find a way to get around my little self-imposed ban to buy that stuff <laughs> um and then it's gonna have a flip over lid that's sort of curved um i haven't decided on the fasting for that i've got a couple of ideas i want the bag to be heavily fringed and then it's just going to be a clutch bag so that when you when i'm wearing it using it i'll just carry it like that um so with the fold over i might just do um sort of a tie with a tassel that that wraps around to keep it closed or i could do some sort of button fastening um yes i think i might put i might because you can see through this more than you can see through these squares I might just get a plain black so that I actually make a full pouch It's lined in the tartan, black on the outside and then I put this over it so that if you do see anything through it would just be black and then, um, but again I'd have to buy that or I could just raid my stash and find some random fabric. I think I feel on this one that I need to invest in the right materials to make it look good. Um, 
yeah and also I might make it a little bit stiffer than this so that it holds itself a bit better um, not decided how I'm doing that either um, so if you've got any ideas I need to look into that before I start joining it but yes so that's my next uh, work in progress I want to make a clutch bag so all in all it has been a very good weekend I feel much better now much more rested um, I've been back to the gym which is great and I'm about to head there after this so my next few vlogs what have I got planned for you it'll be the question and answer there's going to be, I've had a request um, from a few ladies in one of the Facebook groups that I'm part of that I do a sort of a slow knitting, slow crochet and what they've asked is that I just have a camera rolling whilst I knit or I crochet so you can see what I'm making. No music in the background just so they can watch that because they find it therapeutic and I did think that's a little bit odd but then I remember the time I was in the hospital with my cousin and I was crocheting in there and all of the ladies said they found it really therapeutic just to watch it. So I'm going to give that a go. If it will be labelled, I'm going to call it um, sort of relax or something along those lines. If it's not for you, it's not for you. Don't watch it. But if it is going to help you relax, then I... I really hope that helps. I um, have seen, I did a little bit of looking into this of other people's channels and I must say actually I found it quite therapeutic and quite soothing to watch so we'll give it a go and from different camera angles so if you do watch it let me know which one you like. I've also got, what other vlogs have I got planned? Um, the join as you go tutorial, I've had quite a few requests for that so when I make another one of these I'm going to record how I do it um, for you to see. Then my next vlog as well in the next coming weeks will be more progress. So what do I want to work on? The clutch bag, the knitted jumper for all you knitters out there, I really want to crack on with that. And the socks need a heel. And then I've got a few other products in my head that I might bring to life. Um, time depending so that's about it for today that just leaves the 100 subscriber giveaway and um, so to show my appreciation and my gratitude for all you amazing people that follow me and comment and give me some love and just join me at this time I'm gonna host a giveaway um, part of it I'm going to make so I am going to show you the prizes and then I'm going to tell you what you need to do to join in and then I will announce the um, f the proper giveaway date on my next vlog. So there's going to be yarn of course. There is this wool craft cakes which I intended to be a giveaway a while back and I'm now using it. <coughs> Bless me. So there's this yarn, Warcraft Cakes. Um, it is 80% acrylic, 20% wool. It's 350 meters and it's 200 grams. It recommends that you use um, five mil needles. I don't know why it says eight UK. And a five mil hook. Is that a size eight in the US? Maybe. Um, and it's shade 04. It is, I thought it was DK, but you know what, it doesn't actually say. But it will look like that made up. And I'm, on, I'm, I'm loving the greens and the blues at the moment. So there's going to be the 200 gram cake. There's also a stitch marker, and it's the Mermaid Esme's Buttons stitch marker to go with and the colours are just really complement each other the greens and the blues and then I'm going to make a pouch for the giveaway as well so there will be a pouch not this one but there will be one and the yarn a little giveaway so 
to enter that, what I'd like you to do is comment below um, a question that you'd like me to answer in my question and answer. So that can be anything about um, how I got into making, that can be what my favourite thing to make is, um, my most prized make that I've made, or anything, whatever you want to hear about. Um, honestly, comment below whatever it is you want to know and then I will um, pick the best question will be, um, you, well, majority of the questions will be used, um, but I'll make sure that I let you know how much I like your questions and I will use a random generator to pick a winner. It's um, open to the worldwide, it's not just UK because I know I have a lot of US followers. So this is for you guys, all of you out there. Um, so if you want this cake and the project bag and a stitch marker, comment below questions for my question and answer. So that's everything from me. Um, thank you so much for subscribing. Thank you so much for following. Thank you so, so much for letting me know that I'm not just doing this to an empty room in effect, that you are watching it and you are enjoying it. So um, have a good weekend and hopefully I will see you again next week, if not sooner, for the next little vlog. Um, I will let you know my updated schedule for uploads um, just as soon as April's out of the way because that is a busy month for me. I probably will go back to Friday and Sundays but for now you're quite likely to see just a Saturday or just a Sunday. So happy making and find me on social media, like this, subscribe, share and don't forget your questions for the giveaway. Thank you! Bye. It's me again. I'm just editing and realise I forgot to do one very important thing. I'd like to do a shout out to Josh Mr Yarny Pants on YouTube for giving me a shout out and sending people my way. Also big thank you to Ro of The Dabbling Hook for doing a shout out and sending people my way and all the comments and thank you to Leanne of Fibre Factory for the shout out. And for all of you that found me through them, thank you. And if you've not watched them, go have a look. So, peace. See you next time.